do you think it would be like if you were the Earth experiencing compressional forces? Well, you can find out with a squeeze box, a snack by the Exploratorium Teacher Institute. Hi, my name is Eric Muller of the Exploratorium Teacher Institute, and I'm going to show you how to build a squeeze box. You're going to need some safety goggles, about three feet of two by fours, two pieces that are seven inches long, one piece that is five and a half inches long, and one piece that is 12 inches long. Some sandpaper. You're going to need a saw, a ruler, pencil, masking tape, an impact driver or a drill, a spade bit or Forstner bit that's a diameter of seven eighths inches, a Phillips head screwdriver that you can put in your drill, six wood screws that are about two and a half inches long, 22 wood screws that are about three quarters of an inch long, and 22 washers. You're going to need some plastic, and I highly recommend getting your plastic cut to the right measurements by the person you buy it from. The dimensions you're going to need are 14 inches by six and a half inches for two plastic sheets. A wood clamp, a piece of PVC that's cut to about 11 inches. I highly recommend getting a variety of sediments, such as baking soda, or flour, or salt, or even such things as coffee, just to kind of give it more color. What you do have to get is several pounds or kilograms of sand. After you've cut your pieces, now you need to join the 7 inch pieces to the 12 inch piece to make the frame. Make sure that when you do it, all the pieces are flush. To build your rammer, you're going to have to make sure you drill directly in the center of the five and a half inch piece. It also needs to pass through the seven inch side. Make sure you measure accordingly. When you drill, you're going to have to drill all the way through the seven inch piece and only halfway through into the five and a half inch piece. Sand the edges of your wooden rammer, a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch. If you have a power sander, I recommend using that. To make the handle on your rammer, wrap the end of your piece of PVC with some masking tape. Make sure it fits nice and snugly. And make sure the piece of PVC passes through the frame. Now it's time to mount the windows on your squeeze box. What I recommend is drilling through the plastic, but you're going to need a plastic bit. I recommend putting 11 screws with washers around the edge of the window. Make sure that your windows fit nice and flush. Now you're ready to start squeezing. So it's time to use your squeeze box. What we're going to do is we're going to fill up our squeeze box with several layers of sediments. These will represent sediments that will lay down flat in an ocean environment or a lake environment. Most sediments are laid down flat and then we're going to deform them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start layering our squeeze box. And your first layer of sand should be several centimeters thick. So now that I have one layer down, I'm going to add a different layer down. It's really important that when you put your layers down, that you make sure they're exposed in the window because that's what you're going to see. I'm going to put another layer of sand. Just to let you know, probably three, maybe four layers is probably good. Also, what's really important is to make sure you don't go above about halfway in your squeeze box with your layering. So there's my third layer, and that one is of sand, representing another sedimentation event. And now I'm going to put, oh, you know what, I'm going to put another layer of baking soda. Let's put a layer of coffee in there. It doesn't matter what the layers are as long as you can see that the layers are different. Make sure the layers lay down flat. Okay. And I'm going to top this off with one more layer of sand. Now it's time to squeeze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly squeeze this and I'm going to take observations as I squeeze to see what's happening to the sediments in the squeeze box. Um, so these compressional forces will smash them together and let's see how they react. Okay. Oh, so on this side, I see some reverse faults starting. Let me see what's on the other side. Yeah, there's a reverse fault right over here. 
So the sediments are actually going over each other. That's one way that they can react. Keep going. Oh, we have another series. Oh, we have another reverse fault on my side. Let's see if it's coming on your side too. Yeah. So these sediment layers are making this gorgeous type of formations. So you might want to try this again, and you might want to try different materials. Maybe salt, maybe flour, maybe cornstarch, maybe something else will give a different result. Maybe if one of the layers is moist or all the layers are moist, maybe you'll get a different result too. So you might be saying, well, so what's going on here? So it turns out when these flat layers undergo compressional forces, they have to respond one way or the other. And on Earth, there's two main ways they respond. Either by faulting, where one of them will crack and go above the other one, usually in a thrust or reverse fault formation, or they fold, and either they fold up or they fold down. This is called an anticline, and this is called a syncline. And you might get one or both of those events happening on your squeeze box. These compressional features might take thousands to even millions of years to make, but you could do it in just a few minutes. So go ahead, play with your squeeze box, see what develops, and see what might be going on underneath your feet.